don't do it guys don't place trades based on what you see here please consult your own financial advisors and do your own due diligence all right with that said let's go don't look at that number guys 36 handle 36 handle it's september 27th the thursday and we have a plus 700 and like 20 dollars or something like that on the portfolio no big deal um it's a pretty explosive day man pretty explosive day there's uh some crap that happened here so uh, number one <laughs> The uranium strategies here, the offshore sales strategies are not accommodative to this type, this type of volatile behavior. All right, they're just not. So um, there's the stock in question is actually right here, highlighted on the Robin Hood. You know I own this. You know I play this all the time. These are my boys up in Cam Cameco. You know my Canadian brothers, my intellectuals. Um, they managed to beat the case, and they are. They got some good news on their tax um, troubles and obligations that they had, which they discussed in their conference calls and they mentioned that they were going to get out under it it's one way or another in the worst case scenario isn't that menacing anyway. So they did it, man. So now, you know, they're chilling. And so look at this. What happened to my boys Cameco is you can see it's, they're 15% up. And the whole sector is popping. Look at this, 15%. It's crazy. 400 and some dollars over here. But, you know, I've sold a call against it. And so that call popped up. So that means that, you know, I lose that $135 or whatever. But I get this 400. <laughs> I get this 447. You know, even though I'm losing value right here. On this, uh, oops, clicked it. Accident. On this call right here, but it's all it's all good. It's all good. So chemical man, chemical, and the whole uranium sector on fire. All right, look, LEU up 0.75, UUUU point almost seven percent. URG 1.36, chemical 15. URA the uh, ETF is 3.74. It's crazy out here. And so over here we have Apple. Up another 2%, chilling at 224. I gave Apple permission to rise in value and it has done so. Apple's been so good, is listening to me like perfectly. I told it to go down, it went down. Now I can, you know, allow it to go up and it's appreciating. It's doing great. All right. So, um, as far as precious metals goes, they had a big drop. You can't see it reflected here in EXK and Endeavor because, you know, they're my boys. But, it, it will hit them probably. It will hit them. If the metal prices stay this low, it will hit them. They dropped another percent or two under critical support and staying there, not just a spike. Oh. So this is unfortunate. If there's going to be a, you know, it's coming. And look, the emerging market fund is down another 4%. Oh, they gave me 30 buck dividend today, so I can't hate it. But it's down 8.5%. But the metals, man, they're gonna, there's gonna be a flush out. I don't know if there's gonna be a flush. There should be a flush out in the emerging markets as well. We're just gonna ride it. You know, we're just gonna ride it. Nothing we can do here. Look, the option play. Um, they're smelling this downpour and price is coming. As you can see, even though the price was up. The put options for January are also up, which they travel inversely, usually to the price. But, um, you know, the the options usually tell the future of the stock. It's kind of weird how that works. So, so this is the big news. Oh, another thing is, you know, C-SPAN, you know, my, my Asian container ship rental company, my boys over there, Asia. So I saw the call uh, at ten dollars. Then they dropped big, but then today they're up at sixty-eight. So they're trying to make up some of that gain. But I'm still doing good, you know. Purchase price seven thirty-seven here, um, and I've had um, I saw the uh, call at ten when it was up high for a ten-dollar sell. 
you can see it right here, 1116. So I'm doing all right. You know, total return $27 on it. I've obligated 100 shares of C-SPAN towards that. I have 160 total. So even if they sell, if I get any additional gains over $10, I'll still get to keep those for the 100 shares. I mean, for the 60 shares remaining. Now, I'm not even worried about that at all. It's just, I'm just going to let it do whatever it's doing. I'm sitting good on this company. But it's just nice to um, hover around my call sell price. That's the best thing. So, the rest of the market is pretty quiet. Nothing too overly exciting, uh, at least for my portfolio. But those, the combination of chemical, the uranium sector overall, and Apple, and the um, you know the equivalent puts from chemical that lost a lot of value that gave me some relieved me from some obligation. So collectively, oh, you can see this. This is a nice move right here, another seventy-five dollars. So collectively, all of this equaled out to um, like 700 and some dollars. And that's that's pretty good. So far on camera, since I've been doing the show, I think that's the biggest gain. Um, so that's nice. Uh, uh, we had we had a poor week. Poor week coming in. You can see, you know, started with 3,600. Then it was 3,500. 855 and just kept losing a little bit 649 a little bounce back and then back all the way down to 35 500 but it looks like we're starting to make some headway back into a more profitable zone this is also i believe let's see if it's an all-time high or not i think it's close yeah nope 20 bucks off i had an intraday all-time high well, you can see it's twenty dollars off. Intraday, I was up to thirty-six thousand three hundred and forty-four point six three. All right. Well, with that said, um, anything else that's interesting out there? You know, I haven't had a chance to look at any new trades or think about the trades that I'm currently getting. All my all my um, money is currently, except two hundred thirty-six dollars, is currently deployed. It is doing work. So all I got to do is sit on my hands, monitoring this, and making sure things don't go out of control. And I don't have to do damage control, so we're doing all right. Um, you know, the market is still, in my opinion, the market meaning the U.S. markets are still, and the, and the global markets really, they're, all, they're still confused as to what's happening, in my opinion, you know. You can see how SPY, which follows the S&P 500 index, it's up just a tiny bit, like 0.2%. I think they're just struggling to digest the rate hike from the Fed. And what that exactly means, are we close to this, like, topping, you know, are we close to a topping pattern of some sort? Um, you know, is the economy this strong that it doesn't matter? Are earnings this strong that it doesn't matter? Is it infl inflation? Is it, you know, is it strong economic growth? Is it what is going on? And I think people are trying to figure that out right now and set a course for the market for the next six months or so. Um, well, actually, there's, there's next quarter, let's say, let's, next three months. Because, you know, New Year is going to be crazy. New Year is going to be volatile as F. So, at least that's my prediction here. That's what I'm thinking. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm hoping that the metals bottom out before then to have like a little flush out so I can stop thinking about them so much. And um, but really, I'm just gonna ride it out if they do. Um, you know, if they drop another 50% from here, I'll still be fine. I'm, I won't be stressed out. You know, if they drop 75%, then I might rethink like my life st strategies. <laughs> I have to rethink my existence, man. I kind of like look at this. So let's take the SOV for example. It is look at the five-year chart. This is not even 2011. It was all the way up here, you know. So it's down since 2011, like 75% already. If it drops another 75% from here, 75% of the current price, I'm definitely rethinking my existence, man. This has to be some kind of double bottom or, um, you know, if it's not, 
if it's not a double bottom, then we got a flush out, and then we pro we're gonna stick down there because there's no way it's a false breakdown, and then I don't I I think the likelihood of that happening is very small. So if we end up pre uh, breaking down below this price point, we're gonna be staying here for like six months, and I'll just wait it out. But we're not gonna break down below 50% of what we are right now. This it's no way. There's no way. Worst case scenario, we go down and hover around the $10 range for silver for the next, like, year. Yeah, but if it drops below that, I'm rethinking my existence, like, in the financial markets. Don't worry. Not actual existence. I got to rethink my entire thesis, modes of thinking, um, and or put every, every penny I have and just pay some somebody else to manage it because I can't, you know, <laughs> I consider myself a complete failure. But anyways, we're steaming up ahead. Let's go back in the good news and pull ourselves out of that depressive mode and celebrate the $700 increase in the value of this portfolio. And then tomorrow, Fridays are usually very forgiving. We'll see if this is just yet another forgiving Friday. I'm excited to find that out. Are uranium stocks going to keep their wins that they've had today? Are they going to do it? Or are they going to give them up? That is a very good question because the weekend is long and if there's going to be some action in these stocks that's happening, it's going to happen tomorrow. All right, I'm excited about it. We'll see what happens. With that said, guys, peace out.